Good morning, America, and thank you for joining us on this historic day. It is indeed a historic day. Let's show you a live look at the U.S. Capitol right now, where at 9 a.m., the full House will meet to impeach the President of the United States, a power enshrined in the Constitution, a move rarely deployed. First used against Andrew Johnson right after the Civil War in 1868. Bill Clinton on December 19th, 90, 1998, almost exactly 21 years ago. Richard Nixon resigned just before the House vote in 1974, but President Trump's response on the eve of this vote could not be more different. He unleashed a defiant letter packed with insults and inaccuracies that labels the House vote an illegal attempted coup worse than the Salem witch trials. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi responded with a solemn letter of her own, adding two dismissive words on camera, really sick. That is the state of our politics today. As the House begins this bitter debate, our senior congressional correspondent, Mary Bruce, will be there on Capitol Hill for this moment of history. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, George. There is no question this is a day for history, but it is also one that the speaker had hoped to avoid. But now Pelosi says the president's actions have simply left her no choice. And later today, the president is expected to be impeached for abusing his power and obstructing Congress. He is well aware of the stain this will leave on his legacy, and he is lashing out in his typical fiery fashion, adamant that he did nothing wrong, but also admitting that he is powerless to stop this expected outcome. After two months of investigating, more than 80 hours of hearings and 16 witnesses, the historic vote now just hours away. Mr. President, do you take any responsibility for the fact that you're about to be impeached? No, I don't take any, uh, zero, uh, to put it mildly. President Trump incensed, any. lashing out in a scathing six-page letter to the House Speaker, flatly denying the charges against him and firing back unfounded allegations against Democrats. Calling the impeachment process outlined by the Constitution an illegal partisan attempted coup and accusing Speaker Pelosi of declaring open war on American democracy. Trump warns Pelosi, your legacy will be that of turning the House of Representatives from a revered legislative body into a star chamber of partisan persecution. And he says Americans will hold Democrats responsible in 2020, saying they will not soon forgive your perversion of justice and abuse of power. And Trump rails against the process, insisting more due process was afforded to those accused in the Salem witch trials when people were executed. He even accuses Pelosi of being disingenuous when she says she prays for him. I was raised in a way that is full, a heart full of love and always prayed for the president. And I still pray for the president. I pray for the president all the time. You are offending Americans of faith by continually saying, I pray for the president, Trump writes, when you know this statement is not true unless it is meant in a negative sense. The speaker calls the whole letter ridiculous. I haven't really fully read it. We've been working. I've seen the essence of it, though, and it's really sick. Overnight, the House Rules Chairman calling it unhinged. It essentially amounts to one long Twitter rant. Even before the House votes, the Senate is already fighting over the trial to come. Republican leader Mitch McConnell making it clear he wants a quick trial with no witnesses. If House Democrats case is this deficient, this thin, the answer is not for the judge and jury to cure it over here in the Senate. The answer is the House should not impeach on this basis in the first place. But Democrats are demanding to hear testimony from four witnesses, including Acting Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney and former National Security Advisor John Bolton. Impeachment trials, like most trials, have witnesses. Who is for an open and fair trial? Who is for hiding facts, relevant facts, immediate facts? Now, this process will unfold over six hours of debate here, split evenly between the two parties, a final chance for both sides of the aisle to make their case to the American people. And then there will be two votes on the two charges, and they are expected to be near party line votes. That is likely to happen by the end of the day, Mary, and the debate over that Senate trial already intense. The two sides are publicly jockeying over what exactly this trial is going to look like. And the Republican leader, Mitch McConnell, is very blunt. He says he is not an impartial juror here. He says he's going to work in total coordination with the White House. While Democrats are adamant that they want to hear from those four witnesses, they insist Republicans are trying to hide something. Okay, Mary, thanks. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.